day here and Kansas City and a beautiful day outside a little cloudy but warm and we've had it's been ice station Kansas City here first two games are in the books William Carey has punched their ticket to the semifinals at six o'clock Monday with a 102 98 win over science and arts at Oklahoma earlier today LSU Alexandria the generals fell to Lewis and Clark 80 74 so Lewis and Clark State Idaho will play the winner of Upi Carroll. That game to follow our game today. Georgetown, the Tigers, the number one seed overall in the tournament, 30 and 4. Number one seed overall in the number one seed in the Naismith bracket, taking on the Firestorm from Arizona Christian. This one should be a good one. Arizona Christian got here with wins over number two, Wayland Baptist, 81 73 in this division, and 83 77 over at Loyola, Louisiana. Georgetown, Kentucky defeated LSU Shreveport yesterday 82 79 and had an opening round win on Wednesday 77 57 over Rocky Mountain, Montana. Arizona Christian coached by Jeff Rudder in his sixth season 25 and 8, 11 and 7 in the Golden State Athletic Conference. Chris Briggs, seven years on the job as the head coach of Georgetown, Kentucky, of the Mid-South Conference. 38 times they've been in this NAIA tournament. Let's take you through the Jimmy John's freaky fast starting lineups brought to you by Jimmy John's. First of all, for Arizona Christian, six foot six forward, number 21, Callum Lawson. Had 11 in the win over Leo, Louisiana, averages 21.8, 9.2 boards. Number two, 6'3 guard Terrence Shelby Jr., 17.7, at 18 in the win yesterday, led the team in steals. Number one, 5'9 guard Shane Carney, 135 assists on the season, 16 points a game. Emilio Aceta, number 33, 6'4 guard, 10.9 a game, had 20 in the win yesterday in the second round and Al Burge is six foot four forward number 23 so it's Burge, Alcida, Carney, Shelby Jr. and Lawson for Arizona Christian the Firestorm. Now for the number one seed overall the Georgetown Kentucky Tigers 30 and 4 11 and 3 at the Mid-South Conference. They'll start six foot nine forward Broderick Jones averages 8.2 a game. Six foot guard LJ Coward, number four, 12.6 a game. Six foot seven forward Chris Coffey at 14.3 a game. Troy Stewart, who has unlimited, I mean unlimited range with a three point shot. Number 20, the six foot four guard, 18.3 a game. And rounding up the starting five, six foot six guard Joe Burton. Averages 16.1 a game. So it's Burton, Stewart, Cowherd, Coffee, and Jones. I bring my partner in, Ross Casho. Ready, set, go. This one's two are in the books. Two will join in the semifinals on Monday night starting at 6 o'clock. Let's talk about the bracket here. If we can see it one more time up there. Georgetown in the white uniform, orange trim, black uniforms, gold lettering and numbers across the front of the shirt for ACU, Arizona Christian University. Well, an ACU with the 83-77 win over Loyola. Georgetown, as you mentioned, a three-point win over LSU Shreveport, and that came down to the wire. A close call for the number one overall seed. We've seen a couple of number one seeds already bow out last night, Benedictine in a double overtime loss to Pikeville. So they're eliminated, and that game, we'll have that game coming up next, Pikeville versus Carroll. So Georgetown and ACU ready to tip it up. And, we'll and start Roderick again. Jones is ready to go. He is ready to go, <laughs> and the size advantage, you can just see it on the court really favors the Tigers, but a nice anticipation. Got to like that from Terrence Shelby Jr. Knew where that was going, snuck in and got it. Man-to-man -man defense here for the Tigers as the Firestorm goes right to left. 
Open three, left wing, bullseye. Right through there. On the jump shot, up and in by Callum Lawson. He's got an early three, averages 21.8 and 40% from beyond the arc. Inside, you may see a lot of this. High, low, entry pass. Inside to Joe Burton and an easy bucket inside. He's 6'6 six, six and 6'9. Six Broderick Jones threw him the ball. That's, that's what we call high and low, high, low. Three on the way and splashed it in. Arizona Christian. Downtown by Shelby Jr. This team shoots 39%. I think they had a bunch of these last night from three. They made a tournament record 19 threes last night. 19 out of 34. Three Swiss right through there on the way by Burt. He's got five. The key thing here if you're rooting for the Tigers, you don't want to get, you've got the size advantage. You don't want to get in a three-point shooting contest with these guys. You know, for the Firestorm. Firestorm, that's exactly, there's another three from long range at the back of the yard. You want to pound that ball inside. That's right, and hitting 19 last night may, may make them feel inhuman when it comes to launching the three. That's not a realistic expectation, but they can certainly fill up the fill up the nets from three. In that game last night over Lyle, Louisiana, there were a total of 26 threes made in the game. Three on the way, that's gonna be off target. Ran down them by Joe Burton. He's been active offensively and defensively. Here comes Cowherd. He's the maestro, the architect. Dribble drive, gets away with a little push off. Can't hit the bunny though. Rebounded by Al Burge. Biggest player in the starting lineup is Callum Lawson. He's 6'6", six, six, where Georgetown goes 6'9", 6'7", 6'6". Kicks it to the corner. The basketball is Shane Carney. He'll launch a three. Here comes Cowherd on the push. Trail into the hands of Coffey. Jump shot, baseline, and Joe Burton's feeling it. It's Joe Burton seven, ACU six right now. Uh, Joe Burton is three of three from the field to start this contest. Georgetown overall three of six. ACU two of five, and that's their first two two-point uh, attempts right there. Missed by Burge, but Callum was or Lawson was there to finish it. Snuck in there and got the O board and stuck it back up. Somebody fell asleep for the Tigers. Yeah, prior to that, all five shots were three-point attempts. Three minutes into it, Stewart from three hits the back of the iron, tipped out by Burton. New shot clock. Cowherd on the dribble drive, up score. L.J. Cowherd was able to get downhill and drive it and score it. 9-8. Partner be looking, the century mark might be in danger here. <laughs> the winner of this game. Turnaround three, way off the mark, air ball shot up there by Emilio Aceda. He's a 51% three-point shooter, by the way. Let's take a look at the replay. There's the drive. Cowherd lost control, stayed with it, kept his head up. Kissed it off the glass for the deuce. No, he's strong, though. We've seen that all tournament long. He That's the toughness you want from a point guard. Burton's three, yes. Joe Burton turned to the bench. I'm feeling it. Burton, he's got a nice smile on his face. He's got 10, 12, 8. You can see the tape job on Cowherd. He took a right hand, left hand, whatever, haymaker late in the win over LSU Shreveport. Jump shot on the way, nowhere to rebound it. But Cowherd, a lot of energy with number four to the basket. Looks for an avenue, then kicks it back on out. 12 8 Georgetown, 15 50. First time I've been able to announce the, the clock here, the shot clock, forget about that. 14 13, that's the longest either one of these teams have had the ball in the possession without shooting it. There goes Stewart. Contact or first foul. It's going to go against Shelby Jr., Terrence Shelby Jr. His first team foul number one. Following this game, Carroll College, the number three seed in the Dewar bracket, will take on U Pike, the four seed. That'll find out who the four teams are that are in the semifinals. As you mentioned earlier, a double overtime win over U Pike over Benedictine, who's from Atchison, Kansas, is about 30 miles from where we're sitting here. Maybe a little longer. Maybe a little off my geography, but it's close. Stewart opens three in and out. Maybe over the back, but it's going to be last tipped. It's going to be actually, actually tipped out of bounds by Broderick Jones. 
Now Georgetown five of 10 from the field to start today. That includes two of four from three point range. ACU after hitting their first two three point attempts have missed their last four. Stolen three on one. Cowherd to Stewart up. Nice body control and count it. Troy Stewart. We'll get to take a look at that again. Was able to control the body. Here's the drive. There's the steal. Here comes Cowherd with a full head of steam. Makes that early bounce pass. Contact. Great body control and we got a timeout. 30-second timeout go by Arizona Christian University. Jeff Rudder in his sixth year there, 25 and 8, 11 and 7 on the season. He's got his team in the quarterfinals. Early on, ACU two for six, two for four from beyond the arc for Georgetown. Let's look at some early damage that Joe Burton has done here for Georgetown, Kentucky, and his 10 points. Here's the first one. Ross, I think I could have scored that bucket. I might not have been able to run back down the court, but I could have got that one in. There's Burton again. Take me inside, take me outside, a little of this, tomato, tomato, boom, it's a three. And he's perfect so far. 10 points to lead all scores. As nice as a score to get that first one to be a little two foot jumper right there off the glass and in, and then just kind of get in rhythm from there. You know, there have been several games we've seen throughout this tournament where both teams have started off kind of slow. Uh, that not the case here tonight. Stewart's got three, a 68% free throw th uh, shooter. Biggest lead of the game, and then a walk inside. Cowherd did a nice job of just standing his ground and got the walking violation. Biggest lead, 15-8, that's seven. 15.06 to play here in the opening half. Right now, Georgetown's on a pace to score 120 points. I don't know if I have enough air in my lungs to call 120 points here. <laughs> we'll find out. Burton, look to that high-low again. Back out to Stewart. See, he's just inside the half-court line, folks. About five feet in, and he's in range. He's in range right now. There he goes. On cue, baby. Couldn't get it at the side of the backboard. Could have drawn that much better if I'd have been over there on Chris Briggs' bench. ACU out front with it. Kicked it over to Emilio Sedev. Tigers need to know where these shooters are because this team can really fill it up. Air ball inside, ripped down by Burton. Georgetown, very long. They're going to get up in the shooter's face, and there we go. Troy Stewart, how about that? He's got six. Felt left out. He was left out of the party. 18-8, 14 minutes to play here in the opening half. Three, left corner, bang. That's a big three-point shot right there. Was about to say, Mark, that it's ACU team. They can't afford to fall too far behind this Georgetown team. The Tigers have the capability of running away with this thing. That, but I also think that ACU can hit maybe a flurry of threes here. If they get cooking, you need to maybe have a big lead. There's Burton again. The right wing cashes it in. Joe Burton is on fire. He's got 13. 21-11, an enjoyable game. The fans here at the Municipal are loving it. There's Shelby Jr. on the dribble drive. Puts one up in the first foul of the game. Will go against Georgetown, Kentucky, or first foul on Georgetown. There's that last three. Burton continues to be on fire. On the Tigers, Chris On Coffee, the foul, the first there. First team foul. One team foul each on both clubs. We played a little over six and a half minutes. Shelby, a 74% free throw shooter, had 18 in the win over Loyola, Louisiana. Left hander puts it up and hits it. And we haven't seen too much of that from the Firestorm early on, and that's driving it to the basket. Seven of their first 11 field goal attempts have been three point shots. They've hit three of them. Yeah, they don't have the size to bang inside against Georgetown, Kentucky, but the equalizer, the great equalizer, is that three point shot. And like I said, 19 last night, and Shelby puts it up at end. He's got eight. Well, they shoot 39.4% on the season from three. Last night, you mentioned the 19 on just 34 attempts, so well over 50% last night, 56% to be exact. Alley-oops, a little, throw a little bit short. 
Intercepted. Here comes ACU on the attack. Shelby out front with it. Kicks it over to the corner. Open three. And nobody found Shane Carney for the Tigers, and Carney burned him. 21-16. Once was a 21-10 lead. has been sliced in half. Stewart tries to answer and dies. Had the angle here, and partner, when he went up the shot line, you knew that was going to be downtown and in, and Troy Stewart's got nine. 22 between Stewart and Burton out of the 24. Kick to the corner, ball fake. Middle of the paint, then they'll replace, go to the corner, off the mark, and the ball is ripped down on the defensive end by Dominique Reed, who's checked in. Stewart, NBA three, air ball. Chris Briggs a little bit befuddled by that particular shot. Isaiah yep. Walton will check in here for ACU, replacing uh, Emilio Aceta. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> now, I've only seen this team play for you know, one game in, in eight minutes. I'm not surprised he took that shot. Uh, <laughs> he's Troy Stewart, I mean, he was he, he, he's open when he gets he off is the bus. Open. <laughs> Going to work. Nice jump hook with the left hand. Kissed it up and in. Nice move by Callum Lawson. He's got seven, 24 18, 11 50 to play here in the opening half. Cowherd out front. Turnaround jump shot and banked it in. When it's going, it's going. And right now it's going for Joe Burton. He's got 15. Mark, and he hasn't missed a shot yet. Six of six from the field. And that includes. Three three-pointers. Downtown three, <laughs> yes. Terrence Shelby. Terrence Shelby putting on a show. He's got 11. That's his third three. This is calculator country, partner. We need to figure this up. Boy, these teams can shoot it and score the ball. 47 points have been scored. We've played nine minutes. Stewart again hits the front of the lip. Fight for the board and rebounded. Taken out of there by Anton Ivey. He's checked in the game for Jeff Rudder. There's Shelby. Need to know where he is. Burton's guarding him on that wing. Shelby to Ivey. Back out front. Resetting the offense is Carney. 16 on the shot clock. Might as well turn that off. They're not going to need that today. Carney, three at the top of the key. Hits one, hits the side of the rim. Rebounded by Coffey and Cowherd to Stewart. Kicks it off to Coffey. Back to Stewart. Open three. Hits the side of the rim. And then an offensive save by Burt. Knocked it out of the hands of a ACU player. Cowherd. And they're going to get a foul on that. They're going to get Reed on an offensive foul. I'd like to see that one again. I know he set a solid screen and then rolled. They must have thought he was an illegal screen, a moving screen, rather. Conway will check in for Georgetown, Kentucky. I think we are going to see that. Okay, there's the screen. And he kind of turned and his shoulders there did, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Good call. I'll take my officiating hat off for a little while at least. <laughs> Not long. All right, from with it is Carney. Over to Walton, who's checked in, Isaiah Walton. ACU team will play about nine players, about seven for Georgetown, Kentucky. Ten on the shot clock, ten minutes on the game clock. Shelby needs to get rid of it. Gets it, gets it right back. Goes to work, give and go. Move to the middle and then throws it up and hits the shot clock. Like to play the drive by Shea Garland. Couldn't get it to go. The ball go back over to Georgetown, Kentucky, up by 26-21, 9 and 51 to play here in the opening half. 10 for 19, shooting for the Tigers, 7 for 17 for the Firestorm. Conway back out front to Cowherd, top of the key. Over to Conway, play a little two-man catch game here against this zone. Inside, Reed, he walks with it. A little bit of a hesitation there and some indecisiveness, and I think that's an easy call there. Shuffle the feet. Kevon Williams, number 10, will check in. And back in the lineup is the Seda, number 33. Yeah, Reed just looked a little unsure what he wanted to do right there. Haven't been very many turnovers. That's just the third for Georgetown, only two for ACU. 
Georgetown with the rebounding edge right now, 12-7. Three, deep wing, won't go down by Walton. 9.05 to play, 26-21. Reed's got it, gets a strip, ball loose on the deck. Taken away was Walt. Reed needs to keep that ball up over his, up above his shoulders, with, especially with his size, being six foot eight, puts it on the deck like that, he's gonna get it stolen. In the corner. Little two-man game to get it down to Shea Garland. Garland's gonna go to work, drop step, and he walks with the basketball. Try to make a move on Reed. You see the you see the help side defense coming over there in the form of Chris Coffey. There's the move inside. Now he's gonna spin, but there's Coffey saying that's going up. It's going out in the uh, somewhere in the stands here. Good help side defense. If you're weak side, you need to have two feet into the paint to be able to help your teammate out, and Coffey was there. Yeah, the Firestorm may have a difficult time posting up tonight. Any points in the paint likely gonna come off the drive. Turn around, jump shot in the middle of that zone, and that's the that's the avenue that you can attack that 2-3 zone on. It's just catch, turn, shoot. Jones' first bucket of the game. He averages 8.2 a game, 28-21, back to a seven-point margin. Going to work is Lawson. Lawson forces one up and draws the foul. Reach they converted Calliday had both hands up, and he's going to be whistled with his second team foul number three on the Tigers. And Lawson's an 83% free throw shooter. He had 11 in the win over Lyle, Louisiana. Yesterday, earlier today, Lewis Clark punched her ticket to the semifinals, 80-74 over LSUA, Alexandria, the Generals. And William Carey in overtime outlasted Science and Arts, Oklahoma, 102-98 in overtime. So William Carey will play the winner of this game, 6 o'clock Monday night. Lewis and Clark will play the winner of U Pike and Carroll at 8 o'clock. Second opportunity here for Lawson to miss the front end of the two-shot foul. Up the line, and yes. Callum with eight. 28-22, Firestorm hanging around here. Each team has hit five three-pointers. Five of 12 for ACU, five of 11 for Georgetown. Pass inside is going to be picked off, and on the way is Ivy. Over to Williams. Sato got it, got it knocked away, but runs it down. McCallum will reset the offense in the hands of Kevon Williams. Picked up there by Cowherd. Jeff Rudder's gone to his bench and played four off the bench. Williams drives, gets up in the air, doesn't know what to do with it. Didn't no man's shoot it, land. Just, that's right. You can leave, you can leave your feet, you gotta shoot the basketball. Burton, top of the key for three. Joe Burton just on fire. Somebody sound the alarm. Joe Burton's on fire. He's got 18, 31-22, Tigers by nine. And a very efficient seven shots from the field. He's hit them all. Backdoor cut to the basket. Shot's gonna be pinned and knocked away. That's pretty good, right? 18 uh, points on seven shots. Not bad, Walton. <laughs> Gonna have a foul on Kevon Williams here, his first team foul number two. That was a nice move in the last move by Walton here. Got to the basket, but just then stopped and didn't ball fake and go right up and score. And once he did that, a host of Tigers joined him and just rejected his shot. Conway will inbound it right in front of us. 6.58 to play opening half. Burton, and they're going to get an offensive foul, and that's going to go against Broderick's Jones. And it is Broderick's, not Broderick, Broderick's Jones, six foot nine forward. Team foul number four, first foul on Jones, the 652 mark. Back in the lineup, starting point guard Shane Carney led this team with 135 assists this season as the Firestorm went 25 and 8, then the ball is lost, picked up by Cowherd. Brings it across the timeline. Looks inside, trying to get it. Going to be intercepted, picked off. Drive and knocked away on the block by Coffey. Three, three, three. 
inbounding it in the hands of Shelby. Pass inside, cut the buck by Lawson. He's got 10. Broderick Jones is second. Nice move inside and one. 15 foul. Malik Dow has checked in for Georgetown. Now a chance to complete the three-point play, conventional three-point play for Arizona Christian University. A couple of Georgetown players now with two fouls, both Reed and Jones. Both of them now on the bench. Free throw up and good. Lawson's got 11. Shelby has got 11. Dow will check out. Back in is Troy Stewart. Well, Coward and Burton have gone the whole way. Yeah, I don't think you want to take out Joe Burton. Not when he's in this kind of zone. Cowherd dribbles into the paint and then gets out of there before he gets a three-second call. Gets it back over the wing. Goes to work, finds the crease, puts it up, couldn't go. Just hung on the outer rim. Rebounded by Burge. 31-25. The scoring has slowed down here a little bit. Three on the way, circles the cylinder, and pops out on the shot by Aceda. Cowherd up to Conway, inside to Burton. Burton maybe had a drop step there and just didn't see it. Around the perimeter, this 3-2, an extended 3-2. Shot in the way, and the miss by Conway, and rebounded by Aceda. Scoring has, or the offense has gone down. Georgetown 12 for 23 from the field. ACU 8 for 22. 5 for 13 from 3 into the hands of Shelby in the corner. Back out front, Aceda will shoot a 3 and knock it down. Emilio Aceto. He's got his first 3 and we've got a 3 point game. Stewart back out to Cowherd, thought about a 3. Burton's on that left wing. Cowherd to the basket, to the rim and scores! LJ Cowher, he's got four. Finding the creases in that zone, and that's one way to beat it. If you're not going to entry pass to the post inside the paint, find those gaps. And Cowher did put it up and in. Jump shot on the way, loss, and maybe some contact, nothing called. Here comes Stewart on the push of the Tigers. Crossover, back out to Burton, to Stewart, and he'll reset the offense. 4.28 to go in half, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Get pass over to Cowherd on the left wing. Back to Stewart. To Cowherd. He'll dribble drive again. Nice help side or nice relocation defense inside. But then a great pass to Burton. He scores. He's got 20 and has not missed a shot. Well, and Cowherd now with six assists on the game. He finished just a few rebounds short of a triple double yesterday. Three long range shot won't go, and Stewart gets the rebound as Coward hits the deck. Length of the court pass, Burton's got it. Gives it off to Conway, wrap around lap, good. Joe Burton could have done something with that, but he made the extra pass. And Jacob Conway puts it up, and then he's got two, and it's a nine point lead, 37 28. Tigers trying to close out this first half on a run. Joe Burton's having a game, 20 points. The assist that time, very unselfish play. Shot inside, tap the deuce. Shane Carney drew the foul on LJ Cowherd, his first team foul number six. Cowherd was going, hey, I had both arms up, all verticality there, saying that the uh, offensive player initiated the contact. He may have a case, but where's Perry Mason at when you need him? That's old school, folks. <laughs> To the line is Carney, 81% free throw shooter, averages 16.8 a game, had 23 in the win over Lyle, Louisiana yesterday. This one bounds out and Bird gets a rebound. Again, teams to win it all, you've got to win five games and six playing days. Sunday off, back to work on Monday, and Cowherd just knocked down a three. 40-30. 10-point lead here for Georgetown, Kentucky. 3-10 left. Pull-up jump shot, up good. 
Mono a mono here going on between the two point guards, Carney and Calhurn. They both have seven, and they've scored the last five points. There's Calhurn again, kicks it over to Stewart. Turnaround jump shot, nope, faked it, put it down on the deck, gets it back out. Calhurn shoots a three, air ball. L.J. Cowherd will not shoot a lot from beyond the arc. His job is to find the open man, make the extra pass, run the ball club, be the maestro, and get it to the rack, dribbling downhill. And that's what he does very well as this team came in here as the number one ranked team in the country, the number one seed overall. They were number two until Benedictine of the Heart of America Conference got knocked out by Peru State in the championship game of that tournament. So they came in as the number two seed and then Lost on Friday to U Pike in overtime. Yes, there was a great crowd on that for that game last night. A lot of folks came down from Atchison to see the Ravens. The basket kicks it off in the short corner. Back out and then stolen by Stewart. One on one. Aceto gets back. Stewart to the basket off the score. Troy Stewart with 11. Aceto did the right thing. He could not get into position to try to draw the charge on the speed of Troy Stewart. Step back, three bullseye. Terrence Shelby. Up and in, he's got 14. 42 35, two to play in the opening half. And they're going to get a screen, an illegal screen. Set by Chris Coffey. That's his second. Team foul number seven. It's a non shooting foul. Dominic Reed will check in. Good call as not getting set was Coffey. But again, you can almost lay that blame a little bit on LJ Cowherd. The key to a setting a screen is to wait, wait, and wait. And Cowherd didn't wait for a screener to get there. And was and started moving to drive to the basket before Coffee had a chance to set the screen. A little coaching 101 here for you, partner. Inside, Lawson's got it. Throws it in the corner. Shelby for three. It's the side of the rim. Rebounded by Stewart. He'll push it up the court. Left-handed speed dribble. Teardrop up. No good. Tip try. Couldn't get a hand on it. Was Malik Dow was checked back in. Pass is thrown, a nice catch. Not expecting that ball was uh, Shane Carney, but he came down with it anyway. Heads up play, there's Shelby. Aceto, turn around three, hits the front of the left, but a nice offensive rebound on Anton Ivey, gets the Firestorm another possession. Along the baseline is Lawson. Inside, wraparound shot, no good, but Anton Ivey, the six foot eight forward, giving his team some good minutes here. He'll draw the foul and shoot the two-shot foul with a minute five left here in the opening half. And foul starting to mount up a little bit for Georgetown. Just three team fouls for ACU. We look at the drive here. Not much contact, but usually going to get that call. Ivy, 63% free throw shooter, knocks it down. That's the first bench points of the game for Arizona Christian University. Just two bench points for Georgetown, Kentucky. Jones, Coffey, and Reed now each have two personal fouls, and all three players are on the bench for Chris Briggs. Second free throw off the back of the heel. Rebounded by Conway with tip of Cowherd. Minute left here in the opening half. Entertaining first half. Offense slowed down here a little bit. They were on breakneck speed there to start in the first 10 minutes. Conway back out to Burton. Around the perimeter, Stewart. He'll relocate against this 2-3 zone. Pass inside, that's money. Great feed by Burton. What else has he done? He may do the halftime speech. Malik Dow's got a deuce. Say, Coach. Say, Coach Briggs, take a seat. I'll take it from here. A nice drive inside by Carney. He's got nine. Burton may stay, may stay on the court at halftime. I don't think he's one again. Wants to leave the court. <laughs> That's right. He's feeling it. That's a good point. Haven't missed the shot. Let's just forego the 15 minute break or 10 minute break and keep playing. Cowherd, corner, Conway shot off the mark. 
Tip try no good. The ball goes off the hands of Malik Dow with 2.6 seconds left. Arizona Christian, seven of 19, shooting the three so far in the first half. Georgetown has taken 16 three-point attempts. They've hit seven as well. So you had 35 three-point attempts here in half number one. Here and comes 37, 36. Three and <laughs> oh. oh, hits the back of the iron, but nearly had one there. We've played the first 20 minutes. It's a good one here. Georgetown, Kentucky, the number one overall seed, leads Arizona Christian University 44 to 38. Leading scorer is Joe Burton with 20 for Georgetown, Kentucky. Let's look at some of the let's look at some of the plays in Joe Burton before we go to halftime here. Joe Burton did not miss, had 20 of his team's 44 points. And also was able to get it inside to score, made a couple assists. That one to Dow. Lead scores for Arizona Christian University, Terrence Shelby Jr. with 14, 11 for Callum Lawson. 44-38, second half after this timeout from Municipal Auditorium. Mark Miller, Ross Casio, glad you're with us. More action after this. This is the 82nd Annual NAI Men's National Basketball Tournament. A brand new engine, driving each and every one of us into the data-charged future of sports. Harnessing the power of instant analytics and kicking the thrill of competition into high gear. It's the game you know and like nothing you've ever experienced. Shock track. This is who we are. We aren't afraid to get our hands dirty, learning and experiencing as we go in the field or the lab. We aren't waiting around for someone to show us the way. We are actively shaping the future. We're not doing this alone either. We're focused on those around us and making an impact here and afar. Created to shift perspective, to tell a story, building an atmosphere of expression. Our vision for tomorrow is brighter, it's better, and it includes us all. We are putting in the work to make it a reality. And it's not just about what we can do, but how we do it and why we do it that way. Pushing to the front of the pack, leading the way, and staying Christ-centered in the center of it all. This is who we are. Welcome to Jessup. who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, by us, who believe it too. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. We were true to the game before there was a game, loyal to the ball before there were buckets. When Spalding created our first basketball in 1894, we didn't follow the competition. We set the standard, and we never stopped innovating, improving, adapting to meet the changing needs of the player and the game. We didn't make the rules. We made the ball. It's in our passion. It's in our achievements. It's in our architecture and our heritage. It's in the way we innovate and discover. It's how we engage and inspire. It's time to experience it for yourself. Peru State College. See what's in it for you. Shakespeare once said, some are born great, and some have greatness thrust upon them. The rest of us, he said, have to achieve greatness. We know exactly what he means. 
Be not afraid of greatness. Achieve it. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. person who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, by us, who believe it too. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Come on up. Come on, Squirt. financial goals are, a U.S. Bank Wealth Management Advisor can help make them a reality. Talk to one today. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Each day brings new possibilities. That's why you need a partner dedicated to helping your company reach its goals. U.S. Bank, the power of possible.
Mark Miller, Ross Casio back here at halftime. Let's look through some halftime numbers here in Ross. There you see Georgetown shooting 56% from the field. ACU shooting 41%. They're 36% from three-point range, where Georgetown is 43%. Arizona Christian started off uh, shooting the ball really well early on, then went through a little bit of a cold spell. Georgetown owns the advantage on the boards, 21 to 14. Two more turnovers in the firestorm. They do own a two-point advantage in points off turnovers, 10 to 8. And they also have 20 points in the paint. Mark, there's no surprise there. The points in the paint, a 12-point advantage for Georgetown. But they're doing it on all areas of the court here this after, uh, the, early this Leading. evening. Leading scores, leading scores for Georgetown, Kentucky in a perfect shooting game. Joe Burton, he's got 20, Troy Stewart 11. And then LJ Cowher got seven. Look at these three point shots, and it was turn out the lights for Terrence Shelby Jr. He has 14, three made threes. And each, shall be up again. Each team has made seven three point shots in the first half. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. Burton, who has not missed a shot from the field, he's eight of eight and four of four from three point range. Also getting in on the mix there, Stewart, who hit a couple of deep threes. You saw that there. Well, we talked about early in the early going. And does Georgetown, because Arizona Christian University is going to fill it up. They don't have the size advantage, nowhere near that Georgetown does. But it's easy to get caught up into that three-point shot. And if you look, Georgetown was 18 to 32, but just seven for six, or seven for 16 for three isn't bad. But half their shots, when they've got a lineup of six nine, six seven, six six, half their shots came from beyond the arc. You take those away. They are 11 for 16 from two point range. You think, you know Arizona Christian University gonna throw it up by three. But even against that zone, Georgetown, and Chris Briggs might have talked to his team about this. Because you don't want to look at the end of the day when you have all this height and you say, okay, how many threes did we shoot? 30 of them? Did we need to shoot 30 of them? Or do we need to pound that rock inside? Georgetown will have it first to start the second half. Chris Coffey will throw it in, and we are underway. 44-38, winner gets a trip to the semifinals to play William Carey, 6 o'clock Monday night here at Municipal Auditorium in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Cowherd, Stewart, Burton, Coffey, and Jones. And then a nice slot. That's the shot Georgetown wants. Chris Coffey, that's his first two of the game, and he averages 14.3. Get my drift. You know, when you got a guy 6'7", you want to get in basketball. It's Lawson, Shelby, Junior, Carney, Aceto, and Burge. Drive to the basket, can't get the runner by Carney. Rebounded, here comes Georgetown, Kentucky. That play, that first play was a called play by Chris Briggs in the halftime locker room. Stewart, pull up jump shot on the way. Won't go for Coffey, and that was again another three. Seven for 17. Not to dwell on it, but just to point it out to you. Drive to the basket, up and under. Pretty move by Callum Lawson. He's got 13. Spin move inside, up, hits the back of the iron, but they'll take that shot from LJ Cowherd all day long. Six point lead, 18 and 35 to play here in the second half. Out front top is Carney. Skips into the corner. Need to know where Shelby is. Shoots the three off the front of the lip. Rebounded by Coffee. And here comes Cowherd ahead to Jones. Jones inside. Baby Hook wouldn't go. Couple of point blank misses, but that's where Georgetown wants to live here in the second half inside the paint. Six foot six forward. Lance or McCullough, uh, Callum Lawson, excuse me, up and good. He can hurt you driving. He can score inside. Solid. Number 21. He's got 15, and it's a four-point game. Man-to-man -man defense here for ACU. And what coaches will do if they're going to say, if they're going to, your opponent's going to stay outside, but now off the dribble drive, and that's three misses in a row inside the paint. And that's Burton's first miss of the game. 
Nice no look pass inside. We got a two point game. Great feed and finishing in it for his first two is Al Burge. And Chris Briggs wants to take a timeout and think about it. 17 and a half to go in the second half. 46 44. Great pass out front from Aceto to Burge. And his first two cuts it to a two point lead. Well, and after filling up the nets in the first half from downtown, it's three two-point field goals for Arizona Christian to start the second half of play, two and a half minutes into it. They've cut this lead to two. Was as big, I believe, as an 11-point lead in the first half. And now Arizona Christian's come all the way back. Led here by Lawson with 15 and Shelby with 14. Georgetown the last few trips getting some looks down by the basket. Not settling for threes, but not able to hit the close range jump shots. And they find themselves now holding on to this two point lead. And again, Burton after going eight for eight from the field in the first half, he misses his first shot here, a layup attempt just a moment ago. And the key there on those three misses, just take your time. Don't have to rush, take your time, get your feet set, go up and score inside the paint. Most misses inside the paint are because players are in a hurry. Georgetown has the size, and they'll post up against this man-to-man -man idea. Now, if, if Cosby can drop in there, they would have it a high-low from the side. Drive, up, left, good. Great move by LJ Cowherd. He's got nine. We'll see how long ACU stays in this man-to-man -man defense. It's a four-point game. It started out pretty well here in the second half. 16 and 46 to play. Out front with it is Shelby. Goes to work inside the paint, wraparound pass. It's gonna be knocked away by Stewart. Good feed. Gets a little fist bump from Al Burge, who was open, but a good defensive play there. As you can see, Stewart came over and just knocked it away. It'll stay with the Firestorm. There's Carney in the corner, picked up by Conway. Nice help side defense on the switch. Back out, and they're running around the perimeter. Good fake by Carney. He's got the ball in his hands. Goes around. Pass inside. Couldn't get it to Burge. Turnover. Let's check the turnovers here. That's eight, uh, or excuse me, seven now for Arizona Christian. Georgetown has eight. Our right, front with it is Cowherd. Winner gets a trip to the semifinals. Spin move, gets two up in the air, two players. Dribble drive to the basket, up and good. Chris Coffey, ball fake, right foot jab step, took it on in there and got a point blank look. That two point lead has been expanded to six now. And then Conway just takes it away. Good defensive play by Jacob Conway. On the push, Conway gets it back, throws it off to Burton who had a Point blank shot, didn't take it inside. A little surprised about that. Here goes Cowherd. Puts his head down off the glass and just muscles in. Pushes Shane Carney out of the way and says, Michael! Puts it up and in. Cowherd's got 11. A coward, six foot, 175 pounds, but he's strong down there. He's made some very, very aggressive drives and some powerful moves here in this tournament. Up good, little contact, but Callum Lawson, he's got 17. Averages 21.8 a game. Over to Cowherd, he logs a lot of minutes and he runs this offense, no doubt about it, for the Tigers. Pull up 15 footer, leaves it short into Carney's hands, two on two. Carney gets Cowherd, collision, and they're gonna call the blocking foul on Cowherd. Carney go to the line to shoot a pair. That's LJ second, team foul number one. You make the call. Yeah, Coward tried to get back in time. Looks like he was leaning a little bit to his right. Referee, referee was right there and made the call. And to the line is Shane Carney. Nine points, an 81% free throw shooter on the season. 15.05 to play, 52-46. Winners earlier today, Lewis Clark, State Idaho, and William Carey, Mississippi, have punched their ticket to the semifinals on Monday, and this hits the front of the lip, crawls over, a nice spin on it, and uh, Carney's got 10 into double figures. Lawson leads the Firestone with 17, 14 for Shelby, 20 for Burden, 11 each for Cowherd and Stewart. 
for Georgetown, Kentucky. This is the 10th free throw attempt, and now the seventh make for ACU. Georgetown, just one free throw attempt today. And in the hands of Burton, had an amazing first half with 20 points. Kicks it down low to Coffee. Coffee goes to work and gets it stripped. That saved a dunk. Chris Briggs thinks his player got fouled. Crossover. Drive to the basket, then kicks it away. It's his turnover. Stewart. Four on two. Pull up 15 footer. Barrett. It. Troy Stewart with 13. Trying to answer is Lawson, and he does. Callum Lawson. He's got 20. Now, Lawson's shooting it on 8 of 11 today, 2 of 4 from three point range. 54 51, a one possession game. Around the perimeter, Burton, long range three, hits the back of the iron. Here comes Carney, dribble drive, puts it up, acrobatic shot won't go down. Coffee gets a rebound to Cowherd, across the timeline to Conway, goes in, gets the ball stripped. Good defensive play by Al Burge. Let's take a look at that last drive. There's Conway, goes in and just gets it stripped, put it out in front of him, and Burge just knocked it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Tigers, and Stewart will throw it in with 13.42 to play. There's the alley oop! Slam time! Chris, Chris Covey's got six. And it's 56 51 with authority. Carney will shoot for three, hits the side of the rim, and Stewart gets the rebound. I'll let the Cowherd. To driver to Coffee and another Tomahawk slam. Back to back. What a feed by Cowherd. There's the out the inbounds play. Just get caught in a little slip screen. Coffee knocked that one down. And then on the drive. Back to back, Jack. Don't come back. No more, no more, no more. It's 58-51 well, with 13.09 to play in the second half. We said at halftime that half of their shots were from three-point range, and if you're Georgetown, Kentucky, Coach Jeff, uh, Chris Briggs, and you want to see them take advantage of their uh, height advantage, right? And they've done that here with some high-percentage shots, and you don't get any more high-percentage than a couple of slams. Taking a look at our team profile, Arizona Christian out of Phoenix, Arizona. Enrollment, 820. Had a record this year of 24 and A and finished fourth in the Golden State Athletic Conference. This is their fifth NAIA championship appearance. They have an all time record of two and four. Got this lead within two points just moments ago, but Georgetown on the strength of a couple of Chris Coffey slam dunks stretched it back out to seven with 13.09 to go. They just cannot shake this ACU team. Coming up next, roughly about 7.30, tip-off time scheduled. The last of our four semifinal or four quarterfinals today, U-Pike defeated Benedictine. They'll play Carroll College out of Montana for 11 points better than Oklahoma City. The Stars yesterday morning. So it'll be Carroll College and U-Pike and Match Burnham. 34 yesterday for Carroll College. What an outstanding performance. And that's what this, this tournament showcases. Outstanding players, fans, coaches. With the ball is Carney. Into the corner. Anton Ivey's checked in. He played some good, valuable minutes in the first half. Aceto back to Ivey. Jump shot hits to the front of the lip. Rebounded by Burton. Cowherd up the court. Stewart thought about it. Gets it to the corner to Conway. Dribble drive out front. Cowherd for three. Thought about it. Turned it down. Coffee thought about it. Stewart, he won't turn it down. Defense comes out. Now that's NBA three. Hits the front of the lip. No good. And rebounded by Shelby. 
on the push. Shelby has been held scoreless thus far and misses the runner. Ball loose on the deck, nearly saved, and then the hands of Burton. To Stewart, one-on-one, -on -one. crossover, Euro step, puts it up, count it, he scored, he fouled. What an athletic move that time by Stewart. Landed a little bit awkwardly there, but a great job of running the floor and body control. A little step over here. Oh boy. Fouls on Osito. His second, team foul number one. You get to see him bounce, half. bounce up. He said like, well, all his weight was on his left foot that time, but gets right back up, heads to the free throw line. That's only the fourth foul in this game I've got, partner. Am I way off on my records here on Arizona Christian? Four fouls in this game, that's it. Stewart whistles uh, to get somebody to come in for him, and the coach will send Broderick's Jones back in as Stewart has 16. Leaves a little blow after that move. 10-point lead and missing the shot is Callum Lawson. That doesn't happen very often. Misses the bunny. Cowherd back out front, kicks it inside, turn around, jump hook with the left hand. Off the mark by Dominique Reed. Outlet pass, Osita. Three on the way and rattles it home is Terrence Shelby. Shelby's on the scoreboard here in the second half. He's got 17. And it's 61-54, 11.38 to play here in the second half. That's his fifth triple of the night. ACU will not go away. Phoenix is beautiful this time of the year. The Firestorm wants to stick around KC a little bit longer. On the miss, here comes Key Von Williams. Illegal screen, they're going to get that on. A moving screen on Williams. And again, you can watch these. How many of those are set because the player is moving? The, the person they're trying to screen, that offensive player is moving. Second, second team foul. Lawson will check out. Back in the lineup, Emilio uh, Aceto. Did you see that? Foul on against so that hit Stewart. He'll take a break on Chris Briggs. Bench, pass inside, Aaron pass, turnover against the Tigers. 10 and 58 to play. That'll be their 10th turnover on the contest. Two turnovers now for Burton. Burton's uh, struggled here in the second half. He was eight of eight from the field for 20 points in the first half. 0 of two here now with the turnover and half number two. Birds looking for Shelby. NBA three foul and hits the front of the left, and they're going to get the foul on Jacob Conway, his first team foul number two. But this is a three shot opportunity for Shelby, and that is just absolutely a no no. Fouling a shooter on a three point shot. And now Shelby, a 74% free throw shooter, hits the first one. He's got 18, he's got two more tries. Well, the Firestorm staying in this game because they're hitting the threes, but they're also getting an advantage at the free throw line. They're now nine of 12 from the charity stripe today. Georgetown has only attempted two all game. They made them both. Stewart will check back in, replacing Conway. Not much of a rest there for Troy Stewart, who's playing with 16 points to his credit this after the early this evening I guess we're in the third shot is up and no good by Shelby now back to that 2-3 zone Kyra will move it into the left front court it's a high screen by Jones goes to work inside entry pass inside shot won't go deflected gets his own rebound puts it back up and in but they're gonna have a foul on the floor nice work by Dominic Reed Foul on Burge, his first, team foul number three, but is on the floor before the shot. So Stewart will inbound it. ACU will stay in that 2-3 zone and look for cutters. They'll crisscross it upside, then the third cutter is Burton. He might have been open. Spin move inside and just blocked by Ivy. Reed did not use his height at six foot eight. He shot that from his forehead instead of getting up on this up the shot line. You can see it right here. You're six foot eight, you throw that arm up there and you're about nine foot eight. I don't know if we'll show it for you or not, but 
Reed needs to get that ball up the shot line. Under pressure, Williams at backcourt. Pull up three, top of the key, bullseye. Right through there, Al Burns, 39% from beyond the arc. That's the team average. We've got a two-point game, 10 to play. Winner will play Monday night in the semifinals. Yeah, right at the after 40% for the game now from three. 10 of 25. High screen, Stewart kicks it over to Cowherd. Dribble drive. Burton to Cowherd. Stewart playing that perimeter. You know he wants that ball and gets that look at that three-point shot. Three at the top of the key, off the mark. Tip trying no good, still loose, and Stewart comes down with it. Along the baseline, back out to Cowherd, to Stewart. Stewart ball fake, takes it inside. The floater is gonna be intercepted, and they're gonna call a foul on Chris Coffey. That's his third, third team foul on Georgetown. Take a look at that again. There's Stewart. Look for the alley-oop, but the defender just went up and got it, but got a little assistance from behind there. Did Ivy. Now a chance to take the lead or tie it with a two. Ball is stolen from behind by Cowherd. Now two on one. Burton and Cowherd. Burton passed to Cowherd. His shot up, won't go. Not a well-executed two on one, but because both players were on the same side, they didn't get any separation. Foul goal against Shelby, his second. Team foul number four. The line to shoot will be LJ Cowherd, a 68% free throw shooter. And again, this is just the third free throw of the game for the Tigers out of Georgetown, Kentucky. Up good. Cowherd with 12. Georgetown shoots it at 68.5% from the free throw line on the season. A little bit surprising that this is going to be just their fourth attempt. We talk about the height advantage that they have in this contest and doing a little bit better job here in the second half of getting the ball down low. But again, just the fourth free throw attempt coming up. But you see Coward there with 11 points. Second one, up, good. Coward has got them both, 13. Basketball out front, back of the game is Shane Carney. In the corner, now Burge slams it home. Got that baseline, and Burge has seven. 63-61. Two-point game, 8-45 and 45 to play. Georgetown, Kentucky had a fight to the finish yesterday with LSU Shreveport, 82-79. LSU Shreveport had a chance to tie it late in that game and missed a three. Back out to Burton, he's been held scoreless in the second half. He had 20 at halftime. Ball is deflected out. It'll stay with the Tigers. Three seconds to shoot. Stewart, ball fake, puts it up. He's gonna be fouled, and Terrence Shelby Jr. can't believe it. Well, this is a, gonna be a big time bailout right here. There's the ball here. fake, and the key, the key there with Shelby, and I've seen a little bit of basketball, watch his hand go down at a better angle. You'll see his hand went up, and when that hand goes down to defend, you're gonna get more times than not that referee is going to call that foul because his hand went down, and it did. And Stewart now gets to shoot for three free throws. That's a big call and a big part of this game. He's now Georgetown can get a little bit of distance here if Stewart can hit all three free throws. And I know he's got a big time range does Stewart, but and you never want a foul on a three point shot, but especially when there's one second left on the shot clock and he was throwing up a prayer right there. It's a big time bailout. Georgetown trying to take advantage, already hitting their first two. The key is not leading the league in blocks. The Stewart hits all three. Lead the league in contesting the shots. Just getting your hand up the shot line because then you've got verticality. You bring it down a little bit, they're going to ring you up with a foul. 8.22 to go. Georgetown 66, Arizona Christian University 61. And the Tigers doing it on the strength of 50% shooting from the field, 35% today from three point range, 7 of 20. And they're perfect from the free throw line at 7 of 7. 
Here's the slam moments ago by Bird. Jesse went baseline and Arizona Christian cutting into that halftime deficit of 44-38, although Georgetown was able to stretch it back out now to five. Back the other way for Georgetown. We see much better job by Coffey here working at the rim in the second half. The layup there and then two back-to-back -back slams. That happened on consecutive possessions. Coffey tonight has eight points for Georgetown. They're being led by Burton who had those 20, he's got 20 points. That's what he had at halftime. Stewart now up to 19 and Coward up to 13. ACU is led by Lawson with 20. Shelby has 19 and Kearney has 11. The night after hitting 19 three-point baskets, Arizona Christian has 10 so far here tonight on 25 attempts. 8.22 to play. Second half action, Georgetown 66. Arizona Christian 61. Firestorm will have it and Ivy will inbound it. Little token full court pressure. Maybe take some shot, time off the shot clock here. Cowherd retreats and with the basketball is the point guard Shane Carney. Loss has been quiet here for the last two or three minutes. Set play, jump hook, no good. I think that was a set play called by Jeff Rudder. Well, good Gets defense by Jones, too. That's right. Stewart pull up three, top of the key. It's the back of the iron and rebounded by Al Burge. Just blown up here in the second half with five big points. Shelby. Crossover, right-handed jump hook, wouldn't go. Two missed possessions here. Non-scoring possessions for the Firestorm. Short corner, turned down the shot. Was Coffey back out to Cowher. They'll work the two-man game. Coffey's got it, skip pass over to Jones. To Burton, into the corner, Stewart ball fake. Pass inside, is gonna be knocked away. Nicely anticipated on the deflection. Got the hand in the passing lane. Give and go, the slam, and Al Burge. That's his second dunk in the last couple of minutes. It's a three-point game. So we hit the 7-10 mark in the second half, 66-63. High screen going to work as Burge still hasn't scored in the second half. Cowherd's got it. Skip pass over to Stewart. Ball fake, goes to the corner, kicks it inside. Coffee goes to work. Up and under, throws it back out to Cowherd. He'll attack the paint and then back it off. Shot clock goes down to two, one, and then a three. Up and in by Broderick Jones, a 36% three-point shooter. Knocked it down. He's got five, 69-63, six-point lead. Lawson tries to answer and does. Callum Lawson, where have you been? Number 21. Outstanding player for the Firestorm. 69-66, one possession game again. Getting Burton, not scored here in the second half. Against this 3-2 zone, Cowherd back out to Stewart. Stewart drives, pull up 15-footer, hits the lip and rebounded, and then slam, slam time by Coffey. He's got 10. 28 of 56 from the field. That's an even 50% for Georgetown. Man, Coffey's last three baskets have been on the slam. 20 of 34 from two point shots. You'll take that. Three on the way, round the cylinder, wouldn't go down for Shelby. Here comes Cowherd. Coast to coast, layup contact, nothing called. Georgetown fights for it and two players run into each other, Jones and Coffey. Yeah, Cowherd is not happy with the call there. He There's wanted the, some contact. There's the drive, and both players kind of ran into each other and knocked it off the knee of Chris Coffey. Five-point game, 5-35 five and 35 to play. Up next, U Pike and Carroll College. And then we'll have the four in the semifinals on Monday. Little contact inside, and getting it rejected at the rim was Burge. Little contact, play on. Stewart. Drive to the basket. Floater, the left hand, no good. Tip try, Burton off the hands and into the hands of Coffey. Stewart to Jones for three, way off the mark. And it's gonna to be touched by Aceto. 
And you really can't blame Emilio Aceto on that. On an air ball, when a shot goes up, you need to get your hands up. Aceto, that was an air ball and just kind of hit him. Wasn't expecting it to be an air ball. So the Tigers get a break. Need to get it in, they throw it back out to Stewart. 20 on the shot clock, five minutes on the game clock. Five point game for Georgetown. Stewart, skip pass over to Cowherd. Back out front, Burton for three, that's way off the mark. Shot it from the right side and hit the left side of the backboard. Burton, tough second half. In transition three, hits the back of the iron on the miss by Carney. Kyer to walk it up. Run some clock here, says head coach Chris Briggs is in his seventh season. Fifteen on the shot clock. They'll play catch with it out front before they start any kind of offense. Screen by Cowherd. Ball is still loose. Knocked away into the corner. It's going to be last touched by the Firestorm. That's the right call, Anton Ivy, and I saw it from here. Callum, Callum Lawson is going to argue it, but you can see here on the replay. Well, someone poked it away. And right there, there it is. And it went right between the hands of Broderick's Jones. So and that's the question is did Jones get a fingertip on it? That's what Jeff Rudder is arguing as well as a couple of the ACU players. They think that Jones got a fingertip on it, but both officials saw it as Georgetown basketball. Here goes Cobby scored it. Out of that, out of that inbound play, ACU went to a man to man. Coffey recognized it, drove it right to the bucket and got the foul on Antoine Ivey. Coffey's got 12, it's a seven point game, four and 12 to play. Chris Coffey showing off his athleticism here in the second half. That was a great play there. Six foot seven. Got a chance for the three point play. 21 of 37 from the two point range. Coffey puts it up and in, he's got 13. Georgetown remains perfect from the free throw line now as that disparity from the foul stripe, not as much as it was early in the game. ACU is nine of 13 from the foul line, Georgetown eight of eight. They're gonna get Stewart on a reach in, his second team foul number four. Think we have anybody in foul trouble right now. Cobby's got three for Georgetown, three for Shelby, and that's it. Right. Pretty clean game. Ivy back out front to Lawson. Going to work is Shelby. Ivy catches a tough pass. Shelby backs up from three. It's the front of the left, and Stewart rips down the rebound. Eight point lead and the ball for Georgetown with 3.43 to play. Cowherd, no hurry. You see that eye, kind of that bandage over the left eye. He got that late yesterday in the win over LSU Shreveport. Up good. Jones. Jones busted. Big shot by Broderick's Jones. Ten point lead here late. Does ACU have another run? Shelby to the baseline. It's cut off there. Turn around, jump shot, rejected, and Cowherd's gonna run it down. One on two, and then Cowherd just gathers it. And they're gonna have a stoppage of play. Shot clock never reset. Sits at seven. Let's take a look at that block, and then Joe Burton. Hadn't done anything scoring in the second half, but that's a big block on Aceto. Like we're gonna have a stoppage of play here as they look at the monitor. Looks like it is some kind of something to do with the shot clock or the game clock. Game clock has 307, seven seconds on the shot clock. Mark Miller and Ross Casho, glad you're with us here from Municipal Auditorium. A little history. And well, first of all, let's look at that block again. Maybe we can look at the shot clock and the game clock in the right corner of your screen. There's the block by Burton. Knocking so Georgetown was, was Cowherd. Takes possession at about 310. 
which would mean if three seconds have run off the clock, we should have, what, 27 seconds on the shot clock? Is that how they'll figure it? Looks like, it, yeah, I would think about, what, 310 and 27 maybe? Right. The game clock never stopped running, so I think we're correct there. I think what they have to determine now is when did they get possession of the basketball, and they'll just subtract that time from the 30-second clock, I do believe, and that's what they've done. They put 27 seconds on the shot clock. Georgetown now with a 10-point lead. Boy, this was just a two-point game moments ago. Georgetown has been resilient. They had to withstand a couple of late runs against LSU Shreveport. Had a fairly easy time in their opening round game, the 20-point win over Rocky Mountain of Montana. But these last two games have been dogfights. Tower it out front with it, staying in this 2-3 zone. Well, yep, it's, it's a 2-3 zone. 16 on the shot clock, 2.55 on the game clock. Cowherd, high screen there for Jones. Back to Jones, top of the key. Entry pass inside, turn around, jump shot, copy off the mark, off the left side of the rim. Rebounded by Lawson, and here comes Carney. Possessions are now key. Like scoring every time that ACU has the basketball key. Drive to the basket, some contact, and Carney gets his own rebound, gets it back in the corner and they're gonna I think we're gonna have another shot clock problem here so the ball stay with the firestorm from Phoenix Arizona well they're gonna reset the shot clock and that missed shot hit the rim that really doesn't impact Georgetown you put as much time on it as far as the uh, Tigers are concerned. Is it really ACU as well? Because they need quick shots here. Acido on the baseline, back out front, top of the key, and knocks it down. Terrence Shelby Jr. for three. He's got 22, seven point game, 210 to play. Still go away, yeah. Basketball out front is Cowherd. He's got 13 points and a Slew of assists. Kicks it off Stewart. Back to Cowherd. Seven on the shot clock. Stewart's going to pull up, shoot from three. Way off the mark, but rebounded. Another fresh set. Fresh 30 second on the clock and the rebound by Jones. And that's big. And now man to man. ACU has to come out and challenge. Look for a double team and look try to get a steal here. Trailing by three possessions with minute 33 to play. Cowherd over to Jones. Back out front to Burton. Smart. Burton to Stewart, spreading the court. Pass, cut, go away. Screen and cut. Stewart for three. In and out. That goes down. That might have done it. But ACU has a chance into the hands of Carney. Speed dribble. Crossover to the basket. And a foul. And hitting the backboard. I wonder if they'll look at that as maybe goaltending as well. As you can see here, hitting the backboard on the shot attempt. Fourth foul on Coffee, fifth team foul. Well, it looks like they're going to look at that and they're just going to send Carney to the line to shoot two. And timeout for Georgetown. Minute 12 to play. Arizona Chris will be shooting free throws, trailing 76 69. Both teams in the 40s uh, shooting the ball. They mark 46% for Georgetown and 41% for ACU. And we knew that the firestorm was going to launch from downtown. They did last night 34 times, making 19 of them in their victory over Loyola last night. Today, they're 12 of 31. That's good for almost 39%. Georgetown has taken 26 threes themselves. They've hit eight. That's for good for 30.8%. Again, Georgetown perfect from the free throw line, eight of eight. Arizona Christian is nine of 13 for 69%. Rebound edge goes to Georgetown. They have 42 rebounds to ACU's 31. Nine offensive boards for the Tigers and five offensive boards for ACU. 11 turnovers for the Firestorm, 11 turnovers for Georgetown. Georgetown has 20 assists on their 30 made baskets. 
ACU with 15 assists on their 24 made shots. From my partner, Raj Casho, this is Mark Miller from downtown Kansas City, historic municipal auditorium, the 82nd annual men's NAI National Basketball Championship. What a building to play this facility in. I know I just saw it today in the paper that they'll be playing this tournament here for a few more years. And that's good, good for the city and good for the NAIA and maybe change the format a little bit, I think in year 2021. We'll talk more about that later, but what a building to play it in. John Wooden won his first national championship at UCLA in this building. And Wilt Chamberlain played in a triple overtime game against North Carolina for Kansas in 1957 in this building. Free throw up and missing off the mark for Carney, an 81% free throw shooter. Every point is key here. You like to get it to a one possession game, and right now it's a three possession game. Can get it to two if they can hit the free throw here. The minute 12 left, 76 69. Carney hits it. Carney's got 12. Media substitution, Al Burge will check in, replacing Emilio Aceto. Joe Burton, 20 first half points were key for this Georgetown team. Has not scored in the second half. He's got the ball now across the timeline. Out front, just four team fouls, or check that, six team fouls on one minute, Arizona one Christian. One they may look to start to foul here pretty soon. Pass inside, Burton shot scoring. Joe Burton's first basket of the second half may put his team into the semifinals. 55 seconds to play. Carney on the push to the goal, wraparound pass. Into the corner, Shelby's got it. Looking to try to shoot a three, does, rattles around, tip try no good, and ripped down there by Coffey, he's fouled in backcourt, and Georgetown can feel it now with 39.8 seconds left. Great second half by Coffey, gets the big rebound there, he's got a double-double. And look at that pass from Coffey right there to Burton, who has his first field goal of the second half. He's got 22 in the game. And timeout's been taken on the floor here. And Georgetown now, they can take care of the basketball and make their free throws, and they've done a nice job of that to this point. They'll advance to the semifinals Monday night. Yeah, they're looking good here. They're in the driver's seat. This game was a one possession game a few minutes ago. Georgetown with a victory here will play William Carey, Mississippi at 6 o'clock Monday night. William Carey defeated Science and Arts Oklahoma in overtime 102 to 98 earlier this afternoon. William Carey, the number four seed out of the Kramer bracket. The game to follow this, the number three seed and the number four seed will hook up from the Dewar bracket as Carroll College Montana will take on Pike University of Pike or Pikeville Kentucky Pikeville up, uh, defeated Benedictine the number one seed in overtime last night with Carroll College yesterday afternoon defeated Oklahoma City so one more game to go and we'll know then our four semifinalists in this 82nd annual tournament for the line will go Chris Coffey. 13 points and 11 rebounds for Coffey, and he has been very important for this Georgetown team here in the second half. As Burton struggled before that last basket, it was Coffey doing the damage down low. Coffey just did some damage there with the free throw. He's got 14 right at his average. Nine point lead. Three possession, this would make it four, it'd make it really tough on the firestorm. Free throw up and good. Coffey with 15. Little man-to-man -man pressure. Georgetown's not looking and they'll have a stoppage of play. Get another, looks like a malfunction on the shot clock. Thirty nine point eight thirty on the shot clock is. Will inbound it to Carney. They'll push it up the court in a hurry. Al Burge 
Pass inside is going to be touch deflected by Coffee. It'll stay with ACU with 23 seconds on the shot clock, 31.8 on the game clock. Looking for a cutter there and then just lost control. Referee said that Coffee got a hand on it. So Carney will inbound it for the Firestorm underneath their basket. Quick three, deep corner up off the front of the lip. Rebounded, Burgess follow-up jump shot, rattles it in for three and an immediate timeout. So Burge has 12, 10 in the second half. Cuts it to a seven-point lead with 26 seconds remaining. There's the three. That's 13 threes on the night. I tell you, Jones got out there. And when Jones gets out there, he's six foot nine. He got a hand up and he got it up late, and Burgess went up the shot line and drained it. Conway will check in for Georgetown. Little defensive spot here replacing Coffee. As you know, Arizona Christian University is going to have to shoot threes here. And the barrage of timeouts that we typically see in the last two minutes of a game like this, even though the lead is seven points. The clock stops after the made three, so that's not the reason to call the timeout. You're trying to set up some kind of a play here, a press that you can get a turnover and get you the have, ball back. You have first half stats there. I want to take a look at that on Georgetown, Kentucky. In the first half, they were 7 of 16 from three. They've gone one, one for 10 in the second half, so they haven't shot as many. Overall, they were 18 of 32, so they were, they're 13 of 34 here in the second half. So not a great shooting percentage, but one thing they didn't do is they didn't shoot as many threes because they weren't hitting them tonight. Just one for 10, eight for 26. That's usually not the resume that you need to advance, but it's going to get it. It looks like it's going to get it done tonight. Conway needs to get rid of it and does and no. Late. Once you get to four, you can't call timeout. Conway was waiting for somebody, and if you're a, you're a tiger, you need if you need to run and just take the ball almost out of his hands. That's what you do. You run to the baseline, and Conway got no help. Rather really take the five-second call to make a bad pass and steal in the layup. So don't go away yet. ACU with one timeout remaining, Georgetown with three, with 26 seconds remaining, and ACU will have it underneath their basket. Quick three, partner, we got a ball game still. That's right, ACU just uh, took a timeout to set up the defense. They got the turnover, and they have taken another one of their timeouts. Even though no time went off the clock there, they'll have possession of the basketball. Still a three-possession game here. So the one thing that Georgetown could not afford to do was turn the ball over there. They're a pretty good bet to make their free throws. And from this point out, well, we're not in the one, uh, we're still in the one and one, so gonna have to make that first one. But first things first, Tiger's gonna need to play some defense here. Cardinal inbound it, throws it up inside. Lawson shot up, good. Lawson's got 25, four point, a five point game and foul in backcourt on Stewart with 22 seconds remaining. How did that shot go in by Callum Lawson? Set play, little alley-oop to Lawson. Couldn't get the slam, but caught it, put it up and in. You'll see it again. There's Lawson. Defense did not know where it was, and Lawson, if there's any contact there or not by Jones, but put it up and in for his 25th point. A one and one by Stewart. We throw up and leaves it short. Fight for the rebound. Loose on the deck. Picked up by the Firestorm. Five points down, 18.5 left. Shelby in the corner. Lawson ball fake. Shoots a three. Leaves it short. Fights for his own rebound and gets it. Carney puts it up. Forces one up. No good, but rebounded. Another three by Shelby on the way. It's short. Four seconds left. Shelby another three. Count it. 1.7 seconds left. Shelby hits it. He's got 25. Timeout ACU. What a flurry of activity there. The missed shots. And the offensive rebounds. <laughs> and an argument for a four point play. They don't get it. They don't get the call. Shelby hits the deck here. Look at Burton closing out on the, on the shot. 
And then, Mark, interestingly enough, ACU checked at Georgetown, did not immediately inbound the ball. Cowherd was, was calling for the ball to get inbounded. Jeff Rudder, head coach at Arizona Christian, complaining a little bit, asking for the four-point play. You see, you see the flurry of activity here. Well, maybe the end of it here on the shot by Shelby. He's got 25. And see Georgetown. There's, there's the shot. Not enough contact. I don't think they're going to call that, but Shelby knocked it down anyway. Look at the look on Joe Burton's face. He can't believe it. Tell you. Georgetown in this timeout be looking, maybe looking for some kryptonite. <laughs> They're trying to take care of this Firestorm team. Because it's 80 78. This game was. Red Arback had been around. He'd been lighting up his cigar. This game was over. And then suddenly ACU has come from nowhere with just nice hustle and that never say die attitude. And now the last time that. Georgetown had this situation. They couldn't get the ball in. Here's the last thing. If you do anything here, if you're Jeff Conway, Conway you throw it deep because ACU does not have a timeout left. Need to get it in. They'll throw it deep. Pass is going to be intercepted. Three at the buzzer. It's the backboard. Game over. ACU absolutely had a chance and couldn't hit it. And Georgetown survived. <laughs> what a finish. What a game here. That was for the win. <laughs> that was for the win. That banked in. That would have been something else. 80 78. There it is. And throwing it up there. Looked like from that angle, I mean, <laughs> it was over the backboard. It was just too strong. He was right on line. 1.32, and the shot is off. Everybody looking. And I'll tell you, that ball was on line. It was just a little long. And Georgetown survives. Leading scores, first of all, for Arizona Christian. Callum Lawson with 25. Terrence Shelby with 25. 12 each for Shane Carney now. Burge for Georgetown, Kentucky. They go to 31 and 4. 22 for Joe Burge. 20 in the first half. 19 for Troy Stewart. 15 for Chris Coffey. 13 for LJ Cowherd. Our final 80 to 78. Georgetown, Kentucky will play William Carey. In the first semifinal on Monday at six. Up next, battle of the three and four seeds in the Dewar bracket. The last team will join the semifinals as Carroll College will host UPI. That game coming to you in about 15 minutes. This has been the 82nd annual NAIA National Basketball Men's Championship from Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. For Ross Cashel, I'm Mark Miller. More basketball is on the way.